Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Squad Knocker, as always, and today we're gonna do a quick and dirty look at the moving map in the AV8B, as well as controlling your two comms through the UFC. Now that the comms are able to be used in non-easy mode, I think that'll open up a lot of possibilities for mission making and other things in DCS World for the Harrier and is one part that I've been really looking forward to. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We've got a little tour of Las Vegas set up with about five waypoints to start off. So we're all ready in our um, map screen here. I always forget the name of it in the Harrier for some reason. So all you gotta do to turn your moving map on is hit map M for map moving. Hit your map button and there we go. This map M button allows you to access different options for the moving map, and you can scroll through those. That app map M button is time sensitive, so as you saw there, it went back to your regular map page. So we hit that again, and we can adjust our scaling. I think most people want to keep that in auto. That'll adjust the scaling based on how far away you are from your waypoint, uh, etc. You can also adjust whether north is up or the nose of your aircraft is up. So in north up, north is to the top of the screen and that makes the map readable. If you don't want north up and you want your nose up, you can hit that guy again and your nose is up showing your true heading. In this configuration, obviously the map is gonna be upside down if you're flying at the correct uh, angle. So if you need to read the map for whatever reason, you need a city name or something like that, go ahead and throw that guy into north up and that way you can read the different uh, map grids and na names of airports and towns, things like that. You can also choose a true heading for your uh, compass rows here. So we'll let that come out. You can also, of course, during the moving map, access your TACAN and your all-weather landing system, or go back to your waypoint. Now the waypoint data page is also up, so we'll go ahead and start flying towards our waypoint 2 out here. back into autopilot. You can access the data pages by just simply hitting data here and we can see the data for our various waypoints. You've got your coordinates, you've got your elevation, and some other map grid type information as well, uh, as well as a magnetic declination, all these kinds of things. You can of course scroll through your different waypoints to see the data on those different waypoints. We're heading for waypoint two, so we'll leave it on waypoint two. To back out of the data page, all you gotta do is just pull out of that. Do anything else, let's see. Ah, you can also see our sequence of waypoints right here. So you can have all of your waypoints displayed. Because we're doing a little tour of Las Vegas, all of our waypoints are within viewing distance of the uh, map area. We can of course look at the scaling in case all of your waypoints aren't so close together. And we can zoom in, of course, but like I said before, I like to keep that on auto. So we'll turn that off and just have our uh, waypoint two displayed. Let's see, is there anything else? Oh, one thing people may be curious about, if you head to your menu and your menu's black and you head back to your EHSD, the moving map will still be turned on. Um, and that is something that I was a little bit curious about, but it's all still on. All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, we might as well head into talking about our upfront controller and the radio options there. 
So I'll do a demonstration and show you that uh, both COM1 and COM2 are active. So we'll flop, switch over to uh, station one, or sorry, preset one on COM2, COM2, and we'll contact AWACS. Overlord, in field, one, one, request picture. field, one, one, overlord, clean. Alright, so we know that com presets on COM2 are now working. They were not working before. So that's pretty cool. All right, we'll get set, headed up to our waypoint three here. That's about, that's good enough. So we'll throw it back into autopilot. Okay, so let's say we wanna contact an airport or a FARP that we don't have the um, preset into our presets here. So we'll go ahead and put it in manually. So let me look at my list of airports. So we'll go ahead and contact Henderson Executive here. So what we want to do is we want to select COM1. We want to say clear, and we want to put in 1.125.1 and enter. And now we should be able to contact Henderson. So let's go ahead and give them an inbound. COM1, ATC, and Henderson. Oh, inbound. Oops, I accidentally hit the wrong button here. So we'll go ahead and, and abort that landing. So we'll head towards waypoint four here. A cool thing about the upfront controller on modern uh, American military aircraft, as opposed to say the F5, is you don't have to memorize the frequencies that are on your presets. So say we want to walk through our presets, we can start scrolling down here. Oop. There we go. And we can see the actual frequencies that are associated with our presets. So we can see that uh, preset one on COM1 is 327.000, and I believe that is the contact for Nellis Air Force Base. So let's go ahead and contact Nellis. All right, we'll go ahead and abort that inbound. We'll go ahead, go back into moving map, and we'll look at our sequence. So we can see those are the waypoints we've already gone to. This is also helpful if, say, maybe you've got a bullseye on, I don't know, waypoint two, or maybe you have troops of contact at waypoint two and you want to fly directly to waypoint two um, and know exactly where that is on your map without uh, changing which waypoint the computers have you flying towards. Something of that nature, just kind of throwing out ideas there. So we'll go ahead and turn that sequence off. And something also just really cool about this uh, moving map is of course you can see the lake up here and we can see the lake right here on our moving map display, and we can see that our waypoint 4 is right on top of the Hoover Dam. And if we see that on the map, we can of course just look around and see that our waypoint is in fact right on top of our Hoover Dam right there. So I think this is a super cool feature, and I can't wait to use it more uh, in a real tactical situation, in a mission, or uh, in the upcoming Hornet for DCS World. I think that'll be really great. And we can see that we just swapped over to waypoint 5 by using our HOTAS. And we can see that because our scaling on our moving map is set to auto, it zoomed us out because Waypoint 5 is way out there by Nellis Air Force Base.
So I definitely think I'm going to have a lot of fun playing with this now. I think that the moving map and the UFC controls for the radio definitely give us a lot of awesome functionality that we were certainly lacking in the Harrier for a while there. Now, unfortunately, there is a bit of a bug that I can't seem to fix. I've run repairs, I've done all kinds of things, is I can no longer select my sensors to go to Maverick. Pushing up on my sensor select button and it is just not working. So that's a, one unfortunate downside, but hopefully Rosbomb can fix that pretty soon. So we'll uncage that and I will flip back over to our moving map. Take another look. Pretty darn cool, right guys? And I will go ahead and sign off. So have a good time playing with these two new functionalities in the Harrier. And as always, fly safe guys. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. I know this is bit, was pretty rough and pretty unedited. Oh, looks like we tripped the, the tower at Nellis. We're about to overfly it. And if you want me to make another video on this, maybe a little cleaner, maybe a little easier to understand, please let me know in the comments below and I will certainly look into it. So thanks a lot guys and have fun.